In this video, we will use the gamepad input to manipulate the white dot. We start this demo with code from our empty input scene that we made in a previous video. XNA provides a static class called gamepad. This class contains a method called getState. And this method takes two arguments, a player index and a gamepad dead zone. For now, we will use player index.1, but you can use up to four different gamepads. Gamepad dead zone is an enumeration containing three values circular, independent, and none. The dead zone is the zone when the thumbstick are supposed to be at their zero position. Using gamepad dead zone .none gives us the raw values without processing. These values can be a bit noisy around the dead zone. GamepadDeadZone.Circular processes the values taking both axes into account. This is important when using the thumbstick for aiming, for example. GamepadDeadZone.Independent processes the values independent from each thumbstick axis. This type is mostly used for moving character or object. For now, we will use gamepaddeadzone.circular. And this method returns an object of type gamepadState. This object contains several properties representing all the buttons, thumbsticks, and triggers on the gamepad. Also, two methods, sButtonDown and sButtonUp, to check if a button is down or up. These methods work the same way as the sKeyDown and sKeyUp methods of the keyboard state. Thumbsticks property contains both thumbsticks, the left one and the right one. And each thumbstick has an X and Y property, representing the thumbsticks position on each axis. These values range from minus 1 to 1. The triggers property contains also both triggers, the left one and the right one. Each trigger returns a float value. Because the triggers are pressure sensitive, this value ranges from 0 being not pressed to 1 being fully pressed. Sometimes it's possible that the gamepad is suddenly disconnected for some reason. So before we use the input, we check if the gamepad is connected. Only then we can use its input. Now we will move the dot paste on the position of the left thumbstick. We start by positioning the dot at the center of the screen. Multiplying the X component of the trigger with the half of the width of the screen, the same as windowcenter.x, gives us the offset on the X axis. We do the same for the Y axis. But now we use the negative Y component multiplied with windowcenter.y. A bit more information about this calculation. We want to transform the thumbstick coordinate system to our screen coordinate system. When our thumbstick is at the center, the coordinates are 0, 0, resulting in a screen coordinate of 640 by 360. Then, if our thumbstick is up, the thumbstick coordinates are 0, 1, resulting in a screen coordinate of 640, 0. If our thumbstick is down, the thumbstick coordinates are 0, comma, minus 1, resulting in a screen coordinate of 640, comma, 720. Now, for the x axis, if the thumbstick is left, the thumbstick coordinates are minus 1, comma, 0, resulting in a screen coordinate of 0, comma, 360. And finally, if the thumbstick is to the right, the thumbstick coordinates are 1, 0, resulting in a screen coordinate of 1280, 360. When we build and run this game, the dot follows the position of the left thumbstick. Now we will use the right trigger to change the color from black to red based on the trigger pressure. We can create a new color using the from non pre multiplied method of the color class. There are four arguments. 
the red, green, blue and alpha component. Each component has a maximum value of 255. Multiplying this value with the right trigger pressure for the red component gives us a color between black and red based on the trigger pressure. The green and blue components are zero, except for the alpha component that needs to be 255. When we build and run this game, the dot color changes from black to red when we press the right trigger. And finally, we'll change the color when the gamepad is disconnected. So, we've already have if statement that checks if the gamepad is connected. And when we add an else to that statement, we can write code that triggers when our gamepad is disconnected. So inside the else statement, we'll set our dot color to green. Now, when we build and run this game, our dot is black, meaning that the gamepad is connected. From the moment we disconnect our mm -hmm. gamepad, the dot turns green because our gamepad is now disconnected. After we reconnect the gamepad, the color of our dot turns back to black. In the next video, we will have a look at the logic behind an input manager, a system that makes input handling a lot easier and maintainable.